After a year of campaigning by journalist and activist Caroline Criado Perez, and with the backing of the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, a new statue in Parliament Square by artist Gillian Waring has been given the green light. A depiction of the suffragist Millicent Garrett Fawcett, the first statue of a woman and the first statue designed by a woman to stand in the famous square. The statue will depict her at age 60, a recommendation from statue campaigner Caroline Criado Perez, who said Fawcett should be shown as middle-aged, not only a similar age to other famous figures immortalised in the square, but also the age she became president of the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies. Waring's first idea is to have photos etched on tiles around the plinth with the images of 59 other women and men who contributed towards the fight for universal suffrage, with spaces left blank for those who don't have photos. Fawcett will be wearing a walking suit, as she was known for travelling for miles on foot for her cause, eschewing other forms of transport. She'll also hold a banner emblazoned with the words, Courage calls to courage everywhere, an excerpt from a letter Fawcett wrote in 1913 after the death of suffragette Emily Wilding Davison at Epsom, a rallying cry to those who selflessly fought to improve the lives of others on both sides of the suffrage divide. A piece of Fawcett will be included in the statue, a brooch owned by the Fawcett Society in London, which will be 3D scanned and printed and then cast into bronze. To achieve the detail she requires, Waring has decided she needs to use cutting edge technology. She decided that the majority of the sculpture will need to originate from a 3D scan and print. The head and shoes will be sculpted, the banner made with traditional methods. The entire model will then be cast in bronze. The hands, which will hold the banner, are Gillian's. They'll be cast, scanned and printed to leave a piece of herself in the statue forever. Finally, Fawcett will stand facing the Palace of Westminster, where she fought for her cause. First, Waring has to decide how she accurately portrays the clothes Fawcett will wear. For the walking suit and Fawcett's shoes, she went to costume hire companies to find clothes that she felt would work for the statue and fit Fawcett's 19th century clothes. She then employed BAFTA award-winning costume designer Deirdre Clancy, who designed a new suit that would fit the statue's model, Helen. Helen's image while wearing the suit is then captured in 3D by a scanner at Pinewood Studios. A 3D printer then produces the body in pieces, which will have to be put together with the head, hands, feet and banner. In September 2017, the work moves to the MDM Prop Warehouse in South East London. Known for crafting giant props for film and theatre, the art fabricators at the warehouse will be working with Waring to complete the model that will eventually be moulded and then cast in bronze. MDM have received the scanned and printed body in several parts from Pinewood Studios. Over the next few months, they'll assemble the pieces so they have a complete to scale sculpture that will be able to be modified and honed, correcting any flaws from the printing process. As with making anything, there are lots of challenges, lots of unforeseen things that you just come upon and then you have to troubleshoot them and sort them out however you can. The resin for the prints was quite brittle, quite immovable, um, difficult to glue, difficult to fill. So you, you overcome them all just by trial and error and using the experience of other materials. It's also going to be there for hundreds of years. So uh, you, when you're dead and gone, it'll still be there and it will still have meaning. While the largest part of the statue has been made using groundbreaking 3D printing techniques, sculptors working with wearing still have to make sure the parts that aren't printed are carefully crafted. In addition to this, Fawcett's head and feet will be sculpted. Each craftsperson takes their responsibility incredibly seriously. The sculptor responsible for Fawcett's shoes, which will mostly be covered by her dress, has been using designs based on period boots from a costume hire company. The shoes are worked on for weeks, with tiny tools to make sure they're not only accurate to the time, but represent shoes well worn by the marchers Fawcett would endure. The head has been similarly sculpted, using images of a middle-aged Fawcett captured during the early days of photography. After a few months, the team have created a model and they can start prepping it for the next stage. A perfect mould that will withstand the rough work it will need to endure to cast it in bronze.
During this process, one of the biggest challenges is still being tackled. How to effectively replicate the fabric banner the statue of Millicent Fawcett will hold. So the actual production and sewing of the banner has been a lot of working out with Gillian about what it is exactly she wants and the style of the lettering and the style of the fabric, the fabrics and the stitching. In order to be able to create an authentic banner, Waring took Harriet to see the original suffrage banners held at the Women's Library. Waring wants the banner to have the texture of fabric and the letters to be raised so they can be easily read. The goal is to make the message clear and have the banner be somewhere between the spontaneous banners that were handwritten during Fawcett's era and the hand-sewn crafted banners. Harriet's been experimenting with different fabrics and sewing techniques and has used her creative skill in order to make sure it looks and feels right before it's stiffened into shape and eventually cast into bronze. Trying to figure out then how to mould it is very difficult because it's a big, thin, um, fabric, soft object. But somehow we have to stiffen the fabric up without ruining the textures and the surfaces of the fabric. After several months, the sculpture has taken shape and it's ready to be cast. At the start of 2018, the making of the statue was handed over to AB Fine Art Foundry in Poplar. The foundry dates back to 1992 and has worked with some of the most famous artists of the 21st century. Chloe Hughes is leading the project. This is the mould shop. Um, over here we've got the moulds that arrived from MDM. These sections. It's part of the Millicent's torso. The mould arrives and then we paint a wax into it, um, which is what these sections are that Des and Ellie are working on. This is part of the skirt. The statue maquette has been scaled up and the mould created. Now, it's the foundry's job to prepare it to be cast in bronze. The first stage is pouring and painting wax. The statue has been broken up into arms, legs, the body and the head, and each section is carefully coated so it reproduces the texture accurately. Once the wax has cooled, the original mould is removed, leaving a hollow wax replica of the original sculpture. Then, a system of wax tubes called sprues are attached to the wax model to create channels thick enough for molten bronze to flow through. The wax replica is then dipped in ceramic. Several layers have to be added and dried in a temperature controlled fridge to ensure a thick shell. The wax is melted out and the ceramic shell is fired in the kiln at a temperature of almost 1000 degrees for one hour until it can withstand the heat of the molten bronze. Once they've been fired, the ceramic moulds are left to cool to a temperature where people can handle them, around 300 degrees, then lowered into sand to keep them steady, and the team can start to pour in the bronze. It's dangerous work. The metal has been heated to 1,200 degrees. One slip and someone will get seriously hurt. Not only that, but if dropped, the molten metal can explode. Once poured, the bronze is left to cool for the next stage. Foundry staff now have to knock the bronze out of the ceramic shells. Once they're out, they have to clean them up, either with chemicals or by sandblasting. This will ensure all of the ceramic is removed without damaging the bronze. The sprues are removed from the outer shell and the welding begins. As the statue has been cast in several different parts, it must now be welded together strongly enough to stand in Parliament Square for hundreds of years. One difficulty comes in welding the pattern on Fawcett's clothing. It's slow and painstaking work. Using a welding torch and wire matching the metal of the statue, the pieces are melted together. The welder then has to replicate the pattern using a range of tools to fit the work. While this is happening, another member of the team is working on one of the most difficult parts. The banner has been turned from its original cloth into a bronze sheet. 
The craftsman has to replicate the original design by hammering the metal to bend and perforate it so that it looks like cloth. After this is done, the metal will have to be properly coloured so it has a uniform look. This is done by using chemicals which react to the metal to create a variety of different colours. It will then be dipped in wax to seal the surface colour, after which it will be buffed to a high polish. Six months after the statue was given planning permission, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, and Deputy Mayor Justine Simons are visiting the foundry to inspect the statue. They're joined by Gillian Waring and Caroline Criado Perez, the journalist and activist who originally campaigned for the statue. I've got to be honest, when I first saw Millicent unfinished, it was like, wow. I mean, she will be standing next to great men and it's right and proper that we celebrate and commemorate great women as uh, well. And it's important that in Parliament Square, outside our Parliament, people call it the mother of all parliaments, we recognise that our country uh, was built on the shoulders not just of great men, but great women as well. And it's about time we saw a great woman celebrated on Parliament Square. A part of you has to believe that it's going to happen. So, but then there's also the part of how am I going to get a statue in Parliament Square? Um, there's so many hurdles to get over. Um, so it, it feels amazing. I mean, I actually started crying earlier listening to Sadiq talking about it and yeah. you know, what, it, what it meant and what it represented and just realising, wow, it's, you know, it's really going to happen. It just felt incredible. Having been involved in it from more or less the start, chairing the commission, uh, putting out a brief to artists, looking at samples, looking at pieces of bronze, looking at shoes, looking at 3D printed models, you know, the extraordinary attention to detail and thought that has gone into this statue. And to see it all kind of taking shape today, it's just an amazing moment. It's April, the day of the statue's unveiling. It's been a month since it was seen by the artist and the mayor and the world's press are here to witness a historic day. The first time the statues of Parliament Square are no longer a boys club. Less than 3% of British statues feature a woman who actually existed. With this statue of Millicent Fawcett, the first statue of a woman and the first statue by a woman, in this iconic location, we're making one hell of a start on changing that. Things done are one. Joy soul lies in the doing. I would not be standing here today as Prime Minister. No female MPs would have taken their seats in Parliament were it not for one truly great woman, Dame Millicent Garrett Fawcett. Let this unveiling be a moment where we all commit. Commit to ensuring that the achievements of women throughout our history are never forgotten. Commit to breaking down the barriers that still exist to women reaching their potential. And commit to standing on the shoulders of the giants that came before us, like Melissa Fawcett, and carrying on their mission to make this country a more just, fair, and equal place for all. Five, four, three, two, one.